A recent article on U.S. News and World Report found that sometimes a child's first bully isn't at school, but in their own homes. Oftentimes, your parent could end up bullying you, and sometimes they might not even know it. For example, being physical with a child to teach them a lesson, criticizing them, or even using pet names to speak on their appearance could end up doing major damage to a child's self-esteem. So, ladies, what went through your mind after reading this? Garcelle, being a mom, I mean, that has to hurt. It does hurt. And let me tell you, I mean, words are really powerful. We all know that. And especially if the word is a hurtful word coming from the people you trust the most, your parents, the people you love the most. So I think you, it has to be, you have to walk a fine line. I know growing up culturally, being Haitian, a lot of times the grown ups said things that you wish they never, ever said, like, is your butt getting bigger? Are you, you know, have you gained some weight? Like things now, we know that there's got to be a fine way of saying that to someone, but also, you know, sometimes parents will go, are you really going to have another plate of food? Which makes you self-conscious, so I think we have to be careful. And I try not even to compare my kids. Sometimes, you know, if I want to go, Jax, if you just do your homework like your brother, then I go, "Uh uh-uh. I can't do that because in a way it could be considered bullying. But I think growing up for me, it was considered tough love if your parents spoke out like that. But now I feel like there's got to be better ways to communicate if you want to try to get a message to your kid without it sounding like bullying or without it being hurtful. Yeah. Yeah. I definitely have uh, friends who cuss at their kids. And I be telling them, you know... If I catch them, like, no, we don't use that type of language. Like, you know what I mean? Because people get frustrated. I understand. Yeah. But it's like, don't cuss at your kids. That's your kid. They get on your nerves. Also, but patience. I agree. Something somebody may say that they just said really quickly may stay with you for years and years yeah. and become this seed that's growing inside of you. And it's not even your word that you brought onto yourself, somebody else's. So we have to be careful with what we say. Definitely. I noticed that people who come from any non-white background, when I ask them if they're, like, what are their insecurities and where did they start to notice it in their life? Culturally, I don't know why, but between uh, Haitian being one of them you've shared and being Asian, I've, I've heard even Latina backgrounds, like, parents and families are the first to point out some of your physical um, insecurities and whether or not it was your insecurity it became it because they pointed it out and like you said Garcelle exactly. of course they did not mean well but isn't it so weird do you guys have a memory of just walking minding your own damn business in the kitchen or in the living room and all of a sudden the way you look or the way your hair is laying or the way your body is growing it becomes the conversation as they're sitting there eating and they're just like looking at you like wow, look at that, that, you know, that butt is starting to grow, like you said, Garcelle, or wow, you think she's going to grow up with that skin or is it going to get better? Like, you start to go, oh, my God, I didn't even look at these things until you brought it up. And it's tough, right, right, Adrian? So I, I appreciate, first of all, parents like you, Garcelle, who take that, thinking and, and and start to really be present about it so that you're not continuing the habit. And then to remember um, that we internalize first what we learn at home, first and foremost. Before we even step out and recognize what a bully is, we learn what love feels like and what love sounds like at home. So if you have the impression on people younger than you, be that... You know, like a lot of dads, they'll that? call themselves Because they'll call themselves toughening up their sons... So, you know, they make them do certain things or, you know, they'll make them fight them. Um, And, you know, it's just that we have to be careful of how, you know, we have these, like, because it was done to us that we have to do it to our kids and, you know, our nieces and our nephews. And it's like we have to learn, you know, I'm glad that we're living in modern times right now where we can actually define bullying and say, let's stop it. Because, you know, 20 or 30 years ago, We didn't have that. It was just, it it was what it was. Now we are identifying it. We're understanding that it's right. And if you're a parent, you know, it's okay to ask for help. If you don't understand right. some stuff, you know, you go to your community colleges, they have parenting classes, they have yeah. all kind of ways to help you out. It's no excuse. You know, and even Google some stuff, you know, and you yeah. can find out more information on being a better, a better, a better parent. I do it to be a better auntie, so... 
you know. Yeah, it's like really the saying, if you knew better, you'd do better. And I think that in this day and age, right. we do know better. We're having these conversations. We're breaking generational curses. We are having the conversation. I grew up, you know, being spanked. My mother was spanked. We don't spank my nieces. So those conversations are happening, and it's okay to evolve. And I think that, like Jeannie was saying, sadly, a lot of the kids that go to school and become the bully, they're getting that from somewhere. They're probably yes. being bullied at home, and I think we don't realize that sometimes these kids are... It's the saying, hurt people hurt people, but it takes it to a whole other level when you're projecting what's happening to you in your home.